Good day and welcome to this fourth in the series on transitions. And today the message is called reshaping. So I live in a suburb where there are often lots of learner drivers on the road. And I came up to a stop street where a car in front of me had a big L on it. In fact, it was a small little truck. And it's taking a long time at the stop street. And when the learner driver went out into the uh, road, um, she took a very wide kind of dangerous turn. And so the instructor leant across, grabbed the wheel, pulled the wheel across, a little truck bumped up over the curb onto the grass verge. No, no damage, but you know, I just took a wide berth, realizing this is a, a learner uh, trying to become a skilled driver. And the instructor had to intervene, had to help. So we are often slow learners, aren't we? And seasons of transition allow us to be reshaped. That learner driver wants to become a skilled driver, but there was some reshaping required. The same was true of Israel thousands of years ago. And the message came to Jeremiah in a particular way, a very creative way that God was wanting to reshape his people. And this imagery, this metaphor of the potter and, and, and the clay is a beautiful image of God's sovereignty and human freedom or human responsibility. Listen as I read the passage from Jeremiah. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there I'll give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But, where, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand. It, it was damaged. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. So this is a, an image of God at work with his people. Now we know with pottery, there's a season of collecting the clay. And so most likely, Jeremiah has been instructed to go down to the Hinnon Valley, which is south of Jerusalem, where there was a beautiful a clay kind of river area. And you would go there as a potter. Remember, the potter is, is the ordinary necessity in life. It's like the baker, the butcher. You have to have a potter to continue in life. In fact, pottery changed the world, didn't it? Pottery changed the world because before that, people were nomadic wanderers. But when clay was turned into useful uh, vases, containers, you could now carry things and you could store things like grain and water. So communities develop usefulness uh, in, 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 in building and creating things in one location because of pottery. So we have this first phase of pottery, which is to collect clay. And remember, the potter always collects the clay with the end in mind. He has a goal in mind, a particular vase, a particular color, a shape, a pot, a vase to carry or to pour. It's going to be useful in uh, his house or in society in some way. It's going to be large or small. So, so with God, God collects the clay, which is actually everything in your life that has brought you up to this current transition that you're going through. Your tears, your highs, your lows, your skills, your learning, your abilities. God collects everything and then begins to reshape them for his purpose. Then, of course, there's the reality of being on the wheel. And uh, Jeremiah is given this very graphic image as he looks in and he realizes this is not just a normal potter at the wheel. God is teaching him that this is how he works with his people. He pays attention to them. He works skillfully with his hands. Imagine God's amazing, powerful hands skillfully shaping you for a purpose. Now, remember this Pot, this particular part was marred. So it's as if this transition in your life and mine, whatever you're going through, transitioning from and into, God is wanting to upskill us. He's wanting to make us more useful through the shaping. So we are to submit to the wheel. We are to submit to his hands of shaping. He knows that we are uh, what we are to be used for. And the, 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 the marred clay in this case represents a corrupt Israel. Now we're also corrupt. We're all born into sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. There is also, thirdly, these seasons of usefulness. And you've had seasons of usefulness up to now, but this transition you're going into, whether it's 
self-imposed or just a reality of attrition of life or it's been imposed by others or it's through loss or sadness, whatever it is, it is an, an opportunity to be reshaped for another season of usefulness. This is a very hopeful picture for Jeremiah. It's a very hopeful picture for Israel, very hopeful for you and I. Why? Because God has not given up on that marred piece of clay. He's not given up on damaged goods, your life and mine. No matter how sinful, no matter how much of a struggle, no matter the divorce, no matter how the, the loss of job, the lack of worthfulness, he hasn't given up. And so he's reshaping it now to be better than it was before. It's an image of God's mercy and his grace, friends. His mercy and grace for Israel a couple of thousand years ago and for us today, and even for Israel and Palestine today. The fact that God never gave up on Israel way back when, and he was to reshape them for his purposes through Jeremiah's prophetic warnings and his prophetic encouragement, so too God will reshape Israel today. So too he will reshape Palestine. He has not given up on Palestine. He has not given up on the Middle East. He has not given up on Israel. He has not given up on Hezbollah, the Islamic Jihad, um, he has not given up on uh, Hamas, anybody. If they will turn to him, allow him to reshape them for his useful purpose, then God will do that beautiful work. And he will do it for you and I, friends. Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for this wonderful image, this living metaphor of the potter at work with the clay. I pray for all those listening to this message, Lord, that we would submit to your will. We would allow you to reshape us for another season of usefulness in your kingdom. Amen. See you next time.